Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode number 41 of the Beginner to Master Free Run, coming into today, rated 1616, on a win streak of 128 games. So let's try and keep it going. Hop into the first game. Okay, first opponent playing S. Fazario, and we'll have a Queen's Pawn opening. And we see knight c3. Okay, so this could be the start of a Jobava London if bishop f4 is played, which it is. And there are a lot of courses about this opening from the white side. Um, I usually like to play c5, basically a reverse queen's gambit. And from this position, I'm going to play my uh, kind of like go-to preparation. is to take on d4. And assuming white takes back, I have a somewhat rare move in store. Uh, but instead, okay, knight b5 is played. So this is already maybe a new position for me. Although I do vaguely remember checking this. And uh, knight b5, it looks scary because, of course, white is threatening the fork. Um, but the question is, what to do against this threat? Because if I play knight a6, then knight's a little bit out of play there. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the move is queen a5 simply counterattacking the king. And I'm going to start with this move, queen a5. And yeah, after c3, I'm pretty sure I can take on c3. But I have to, I have to basically calculate here. Pawn takes c3, knight c7, I do get forked. Let's say king d7, and then knight takes a8. I'll have pawn takes b2 with discover check. So I'm going to go for it. I'm still kind of relying on some vague memories of looking at this line. And there's also bishop c7. I think that's less scary. At the very least, I have pawn b6 there. But it's definitely getting messy from early on. And I think my opponent is aware of the danger. Maybe a lot of players would immediately hop in to, to fork, but it's definitely not so simple for white. If white takes back with the pawn, then I can probably play knight a6 and just control c7, and then I'll be up a pawn. In similar fashion, knight takes c3. Uh, there's really no worries for black. can keep developing. Uh, but we're entering the spicy line. And I mean, I was looking at king d7, but I also have king d8. Not sure if there's a huge difference between these moves. I mean, after king d8 knight takes, I still take and get ready to take the rook. Probably both are fine. Yeah, let's play king d8. I was thinking the one concern would be that after takes, there's bishop c7. But uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be seizing the initiative first there. But this is definitely not the typical opening I get in, in the speed run, where it's basically complete chaos by move 7. Um, but I think it's a good type of chaos. Because white's king is probably more of a target than my king. And it's not easy for white to deal with this, uh, I mean, deal with a threat of pawn takes pawn. I mean, maybe b4 is a possibility. Okay, white takes, so I'll take back. King e2. So already by move 9, we've both moved our kings, both lost casting rights. Now, I would like to somehow attack the king here. E5 comes to mind. One option. Have to watch out for this move. Knight takes d5. Another option could be queen b2 check. I'm not sure about queen d2. I take the rook. I lose my rook. I'm pretty messy there. In e5... Let's calculate. e5. So I hit the bishop and I hit the knight. Not scared of taking the rook because I take the bishop. And if knight takes pawn, 
And I can probably play queen c4. And then win the knight. I should be up material after all said and done. So yeah, let's go for pawn e5. So now I'm realizing pawn e5, rook c1. Uh, it's not simple. Pawn e5, rook c1, queen b2, rook c2. Yeah, rook c1's a little bit annoying. Hmm. Pawn e5, rook c1. I'm taking a lot of time here, but I'm trying to weigh my options. Queen c4 doesn't seem right. Actually, circling back to queen b2 here and then take. Um, yeah, not sure. This is e5, rook c1. I might be in trouble. I might have knight. No, knight e4 doesn't work there. Queen c4, queen d3. Hmm. Looking at pawn b6. Bishop g4 doesn't work. Taking a lot of time. I mean, maybe I just lose uh, the d-pawn. Like knight c6. Feels very wrong. Queen b2, queen d2, I take, take. Maybe this is a line to go for. Queen b2. I didn't like this initially, but not really seeing anything better. Burned a lot of time there. So at least after queen d2 takes, takes, it's a fair trade. Okay, king e1 is a welcome sight. Now e5 is still messy. Like knight takes d5. I think I have to go for this though. The nice thing about e5 is I'm threatening force mate with bishop b4. And even if white takes, does guard b4, maybe I just play bishop d7 there. Or maybe I take first in bishop d7. Well, white's the one who has to be really careful now. And this is a massive threat. I'm threatening the bishop and I was threatening the knight, but okay. Looks like white succumbed to the pressure, and uh, yeah, it's going to be mate next move. Queen d2 is the only legal move here. So, interesting game to start this episode. But let's definitely do some analysis here, starting with the opening. And just to share, if white played the main move, pawn takes pawn, uh, this is what people play most often. I was going to play bishop g4. And this is somewhat of a, a sideline against the Jobava, but the point is to provoke white uh, to somehow save the queen, usually with f3, bishop e2, or knight f3. If white plays f3, which is the main move, I would play bishop d7, and then complete development, usually in a pretty solid fashion. Um, it's not the most uh, venomous line, but it's a very solid line where black can build up pressure on the queen side from early on. Uh, of course, we didn't go for that because my opponent played knight b5. And then starting in this position, uh, yeah, the best move for black is queen a5. And I'll turn on the eval bar here. So black does have the advantage, but it does get messy. After c3 takes and knight to c7, uh, apparently the only winning move is king d8. If I were to play king d7, then white is actually better after bishop b5, if I play knight c6, only winning move for white, pawn b4. And if I take, then knight takes d5, and I'm not actually getting c2 in time. Like if I play c2 check, then white can take, and then take, and then take. Yeah, this is one example of how things could go very wrong for black early on. So thankfully, I chose the right square for my king, played king d8. 
and after takes, takes. Yeah, the engine says black is completely winning here. There's actually a lot of moves black can play to keep the advantage. And I played the best move, queen b2. Um, I was taking a lot of time considering this, and I rejected it because of rook c1. And I briefly considered this line during the game, and uh, I spotted the idea in knight e4, the point that after takes, I would take back with a fork. But I rejected this because d5 is hanging, and I thought that after knight takes d5, it doesn't look great for black. Uh, however, the engine says this is still fine for black. Queen to b2 keeps advantage. A nice skewer against the king and f pawn. And if rook c2, there's queen b5. Yeah, this is just a total mess. If king f3, there's bishop. Is there bishop g4? No, there's not bishop g4 because f2 is defended by the rook. Wow. So if king f3, the only winning move would have been queen d7, leaving the knight hanging on e4. If king takes e4, black has force mate after this, and then 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 checkmate. I don't think I would have calculated that far. Uh, this is all just a very deep engine line. So if we go back, um, yeah, I, I really just wanted to avoid the chaos that could have arose after pawn e5. So after queen to b2, I was more concerned about queen d2 here, but uh, it would have been fine for black. I would have taken, and then if knight takes a8, ah, then e5. Saving my knight, attacking the bishop. And this this does look good for black because the knight is trapped on a8. So, yeah, after what happened in the game with king e1, e5, yeah, it's, it's not good for white. If knight takes on d5, then black is fine after takes and takes. And uh, yeah, knight d7, and the bishop is hit, the rook is hit. Bishop e4 check is a threat, so black is in full control. So, yeah, probably there's more analysis that could be done from this game, but uh, hopefully some lessons to take away, and hopefully this goes to show just uh, a very specific opening lesson that if you play this line against Joe Bava London, you shouldn't be too afraid of knight b5. Black does have the upper hand with queen a5, but you kind of still have to play accurately to keep the advantage for black. So, uh, yeah, interesting first game. Uh, let's move on. Let's do at least one more. Okay, next opponent. Playing Naj something something. Naji Malik, one, two, three. Opponent is taking their time. Plays e4. This time we'll have a king's pawn. A bishop's opening. Yeah, so against the bishop's opening, I usually like to start by developing the knights. And white plays a3. I was going to say that if white were to play knight c3 here, there's an idea to play knight a5 and get the bishop pair as soon as possible. But with a3, white is giving a square for the bishop to retreat. So I think I'll be fine just completing development. Bishop c5. White's playing h3. Okay, so a little bit of a uh, slow play from white. Moving the flank pawns rather than developing the pieces. And against such an opening, and I'm very much inclined to try and open the center. And I think the go-to move here is d5. And this will resemble basically a reverse scotch opening where even though I'm black, I have a bit more space, small lead in development. I'll play bishop to e6, completing development. And there's some nice harmony among the minor pieces here. Let's castle kingside. Bishop a2, okay, so white is a little bit slow to develop the queenside. 
And my first thought in this position is to try and attack on the king side. Queen h4 comes to mind. Just uh, an aggressive looking move. I think it's a nice square for the queen too. It's not easy for white to attack, especially because white put the knight here rather than f3. So yeah, I'll go for queen h4. This also prevents knight g3. The knight moves here, then I can take it because f pawn is pinned. But white plays knight c3. I mean, I'm already kind of fantasizing about sacrificing on h3, but that almost certainly doesn't work because my knight is uh, is attacked twice on d5. So what to do? I might just take, take and then trade. I'll still have a small lead in development. I could play rook d8 and allow the trades on d5. Also considering this move, but I feel like that leads to unnecessary complications. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take on c3. I hit the queen, so white doesn't have time to take my bishop. Oh, but now, yeah, now maybe I can consider bishop takes h3. And if I want to play this move, there's a few things to address. And first of all, there's knight e4, which might spoil my fun. I was thinking takes and then takes, and then I have queen g3. Again, exploiting the pin. So takes, takes, queen g3, king h1, takes, king g1. It feels very close to working, like knight d4. But then there's bishop d5, a nice defensive move. Um, yeah, it's one of these positions I could probably drain a lot of time calculating bishop takes h3. But I'm going to just go for the more safe, solid move. And I have a feeling that the sacrifice didn't work there. Um, we'll definitely want to analyze it after the game, though. So rook takes a2. And now... I like the idea of expanding. Pawn f5. Somewhat multi-purpose. So I'm preventing knight e4, which was one idea for white. Maybe setting up some rook lifting ideas, like rook f6 to g6. Also ideas of pawn f4 to f3. White offering some more trades. Yeah, if I trade too much, then it might be hard to attack later on. There's knight d4 here. There's also bishop d6. I don't think I want to trade off this bishop because... Yeah, let's say the bishop stays on e3. Then this can be fuel for my attack. And now I am probably threatening f4, bishop moves, and f3. Even though it seems like this is a small victory for white, white developed, I retreated. Hopefully it leads to still a nice attack for me. White plays f3, that's interesting. So it gives the bishop a square to move back to. Now I definitely don't want to play f4 because then the bishop can retreat and the knight has access to e4. So maybe now it's time to rook lift. Rook f6. I mean, I would like to generate threats on the king side before white has time to get this rook back into play. Yeah, white attacks my queen. Move back. If I get the rook to g6, I will be threatening queen takes h3. Okay, knight b5. I mean, white seems very eager to trade off my bishop. I think I'll just allow it. I'll play rook g6. Getting the rook lift in. A previous episode, I had a rook lift, at least for the first two games. I had to change a tire mid-episode to wear my, my rook lift tank top. Wait a minute. Let me calculate. I was about to automatically capture back, but 
I do have the in-between move, queen takes h3. Yeah, queen takes h3 is probably much better. Because I'm threatening mate. White can't do much with the knight. White actually has very few ways to defend against a mate threat. Okay, that would have been a big missed opportunity if I took the knight right away. So white plays g4. Now, of course, I could take the knight and be happy, but I'm wondering about this move. Pawn takes pawn, because I'm still threatening horse mate. Yeah, I, I don't really see a defense for white. I'm threatening to take with discover check and then queen g2 checkmate. Like wherever the knight moves, then I have the maiden two. So white plays pawn f4. I think most people would have taken the knight by now. But I don't think it's necessary again. Because in this position, I have pawn g3, threatening mate. And really, I'm just more interested in mating than winning back the knight. So let's play pawn g3. It might be that white has no defense now. Like queen h2 is a mate threat. Bishop takes doesn't help. Yeah, the game is uh, about to end. Okay, so hopefully that was instructive. Um... Yeah, I almost uh, almost committed a, a a big mistake taking back. Like it's so easy, especially in in rapid games, to play these automatic recaptures. Um, but very often, you want to just slow down and, and look for other choices in the position. In this case, yeah, White allowed Queen takes H three. So my opponent probably should have moved the King off the G file. Uh, best move according to the engine is King H one. And then black is still in good shape. Uh, the engine really likes this move pawn e4, which would have led to chaos. I don't know if I would have played this move. Um, well, I'm not sure what I would have done. Like maybe I would have gone for rook d8 or even a6 and provoked the trade. But yeah, it was still a pleasant position for black. So I do want to go back and just look at a few moments in this game. White did play slowly. And I think I got a very fine position in the opening. Uh, queen h4, knight c3. And the main thing I wanted to look at was in this position, I was considering bishop takes h3. And apparently this would have been the best move. But I didn't play this because it seemed like either taking or knight e4 would have led to unclear positions. Um, but I see now, if knight e4, I would have bishop g4 saving both bishops, because I'm hitting the queen. White doesn't have f3 because a pawn is pinned. So I would have won a pawn in this line. But if we go back, how does the other line work? If white takes queen g3. Yeah, I was calculating this. I saw knight d4, which is the best move. And I basically stopped calculating after bishop d5 thinking that the bishop is preventing knight f3. Oh, wow. So black has one winning move here. And it's really, it's not easy to find. I don't feel so bad for missing this, this chance. The only winning move for black is to play pawn e4, which does a few things. First of all, this is a very engine-like move because puts a pawn where three different things can take it. But one of the points is to try and obstruct the bishop. So if pawn or knight takes, there's knight f3, which is winning for black. So the best try is bishop takes e4. Uh, but the other point of pawn e5 was to unleash this diagonal or the eventual bishop d6. And I still don't fully understand how this is winning. Because what if f4? And of course black is threatening mate. f4. Ah, so the only winning idea, again, is for black to play bishop back to c5, shifting back to the more exploitable diagonal. 
if rook f2 and rook a8 yeah this is very hard to judge of course the engine says it's winning i can see that there's a lot of pressure but i don't think this would have been so findable for even a grandmaster if if they were playing the position in a rapid game so yeah what i did maybe was a missed opportunity but it did keep things a bit more controlled and uh yeah i was able to eventually make my attack work out so okay some interesting games thus far let's do one more now rated 1633 next opponent playing lucan five First game that I'm white in this episode. And I'll play standard e4, knight f3. Um, let's play a Ponziani. In the last episode, I played um, an Italian so called Greco Gambit. But yeah, reverting to Ponziani, one of my favorite openings to play, uh, especially against amateur players. Just a very easy opening. Uh, and a lot of the main lines. And black already goes slightly wrong with knight g4. Uh, the best move would have been knight d5 to keep the knight centralized. So this is one of the um, one of the nice things about Ponziani is it can lead to positions like this where white has a center, very fluid development, and this knight on g4 is very misplaced. I'll go ahead and kick it with pawn h3. Essentially forcing knight h6. Now it is a question if I want to take the knight. Now taking the knight would damage black structure, it would leave the king weak. At the same time, I kind of want to keep my bishop on the board. Like there's an idea of bishop to g5. So a small decision here probably don't want to take too much time. I think I will just take the knight. I think this is probably the simplest approach. And then I should still complete development. I mean, probably bishop to d3 looks nice. I would like to castle soon, and then if I get the chance, it would be really nice to play knight to e4. And black is challenging the center here. Another idea is to perhaps castle queenside, if I can somehow make that work. Like even starting with queen c2. Yeah, queen c2 creating the battery. Let's start with this. A very multi-purpose. Creates the battery, prepares queenside castling, reinforces the knight as well. And I think my king will be very safe on the queen side, assuming it can get there. Um, now, it's another example where it might be easy to just recapture automatically, but I do have the in-between move. Bishop takes h7. And if I take first, king h8, and then capture, and I basically win a pawn. Black can't trap my bishop. Yeah, let's go for that. There's cases where, like, if there were still a pawn on g7, black would have g6 to trap the bishop. But there's no such move. Pawn f5 attempting to obstruct the queen-bishop relationship uh, would probably just walk into en passant. Now, the one drawback of going into this line is... I can't castle next move if the queen is staying controlling d1. Uh, but just as I say that, the queen moves to e7. So now I could castle if I want. Black, of course, is attacking the pawn on e5. So this could get a little bit messy. I'm looking at casting queenside. If casting queenside, black also has this move, takes. If I take with queen, there's king takes bishop. Hmm. Yeah, it's kind of hard to defend the pawn. 
I'm calculating casting queen side takes I take with pawn and then knight takes yeah it's not so clear also considering queen e4 here an attempt to defend the pawn but that just looks really shaky like f6 and then the bishops attack the pawns attacked again So what to do? I'm still looking at casting queen side and then takes and then takes and then takes. It's basically a big trade. I'm not sure how much of an attack I have. I mean, maybe white's still a bit better because I'll have the rook on the D file, get the other rook to the E file. Yeah, I'm going to go for this. It seems like black has been coping well, like from what probably should have been an opening gone wrong. It seems like black is getting a close to playable position in the middle game. So bishop takes c3. Um, yeah, I think I have to take this way. Now queen a3, wow. I mean, I, I can't play queen b2 because the queen has to stay defending the bishop. So let's play this. Both kings are a bit exposed now. And bishop to e6. So it looks like black is threatening to take. And my queen is currently overworked. It's defending the a2 pawn and bishop on h7. So if I just move my bishop, like let's say bishop f5. And there's also bishop e4. Actually, bishop f5, there's takes and takes and then queen takes e3, which I probably don't want to deal with. Yeah, I'm going to play bishop e4. Just a centralizing move. And the nice thing here is I'm still up a pawn, but it's scary because... I mean, material isn't as relevant as uh, the tacking situation on the queen side. Basically, I just have to make sure that black isn't building up too much pressure. I mean, knight a5 and knight c4 could be an idea. We see rook g8, so I'm pressuring the g2 pawn. Looking at knight d4... Kind of like knight e4. Actually, knight e4, there's knight takes e5. Yeah, maybe I don't like it. I could just defend. Also looking at queen d2 here, simply attacking the pawn. And there's king g7. Hmm. Could also play g4. Be a nice, uh, nice move to neutralize the G file. Let's go for this. Maybe some ideas later of playing pawn G5. Okay, that goes for knight A5. Yeah, I really just want to neutralize. And there's queen B2. Oh, maybe I can play queen C1. Oh no, queen c1 gets mated. I was thinking I attacked the, the pawn and the queen. Okay, that would be really bad. So what to do here? Black wants to play knight c4. Yeah, maybe I just play queen. Hmm. Queen b2. Trying to simplify. If queen a4, I think I'll play bishop c2. There's also queen a4, rook d4. That could walk into knight c4, though. Queen c5, okay. 
maybe queen b4. At this point, I'm really just trying to simplify. I'm aware that f2 is hanging, but then I can take defending a2. If queens can come off the board, then it'll become much, much easier for white to play. I don't think there's a move for black to avoid the queen trade and also save the knight. So black is taking time. I imagine my opponent will eventually take on b4. Yeah, so queens are off the board. And now... I probably just want to simplify further. Bishop d5. Trying to force some more trades. I guess in, in this situation, there's a couple of reasons for trying to simplify. I'm up material, but I'm also down on time. And black is trying to keep things complicated. A5, very interesting move. And giving me a choice, too. Like, what thing to take. I want to take the knight and then take... I think I'll start by taking the knight. And I'll play rook d4. Oh, but then b5 is coming. Hmm. Rook d4, b5. I'm probably eventually going to have to take on a5. Still not simple. I really have to watch my time as well. Also thinking knight d2. Knight d2, bishop e6. And then knight b3. Maybe that's the way to go. Not super happy about this. And if takes, I take, and then takes, and then takes. And then, yeah, the point here is to bring the knight. And if takes, I take. And knight obstructs uh, attack against a2. Now maybe f4. Trying to get an f5. Rook a3. Probably a useful move. Actually a very good move. I think I should defend from a distance. I'm just anticipating this. Trying to centralize and hold my ground. And my pawns look nice, but it's not easy to figure out what to do here. The last couple of moves were kind of without a purpose. I'm trying to play quickly. Okay. I'm going to try and expand now. Below a minute. Really have to stay focused here. Okay, happy to trade. I see rookie eight and then e6, maybe. Hmm. Okay, bring the knight in. Rook e7, I have f6. A 
Okay, opponent has blundered. That may have been their first blunder of the game. They were putting up such good resistance. But now uh, I have plenty of time. 39 seconds, more than enough. Queen f6 and rook will come in. Okay, maybe I should wear a heart rate monitor for, uh, for these games. It was a slightly nerve-wracking finish. And uh, yeah, out of the opening, it really seemed like I was going to win quickly. I really thought I, I would win with no issue. Uh, but maybe, yeah, maybe bishop takes h6 wasn't the best. The engine does like bishop g5 here, throwing in the attack against the queen. Um, but it still should be good for white. Bishop d3, d6, queen c2. Yeah, this um, this maybe wasn't the best practical way of playing for white. Engine says I should just take back, and yeah, maybe this is a bit more stable. So h pawn is still hard to defend. I would have been preparing to castle, maybe set up some discoveries. But we went into this line, and then yeah, I'm wondering if I was worse at any point. It takes takes queen a three. Yeah, knight takes e five. Would have led to a very interesting position. Engine says it's about equal here. But black went for the attack. And I mean, I was able to trade queens. But black still did a really nice job of keeping the pressure. A5 was a great move. Uh, pressuring the queen side, trying to get the rook into play. And yeah, even though I was up a pawn, black has full compensation. Brought my knight to b3. I think this moment, rook a3 was a great move. Opponent found a lot of good moves in this game. And the engine actually says black is slightly for choice here. So <laughs> I'm very grateful to uh, keep my winning streak alive. But uh, yeah, sometimes I just have to keep the game going, keep moving quickly in these situations. And... Yeah, black didn't quite find the best path forward. Uh, there was a nice idea to play bishop c4, which I actually missed. This this basically traps my rook on b4, uh, but it's hard for black to actually win the rook because c5 would walk into knight takes e5. But I think if black played this move, I I would have had a hard time figuring out what to do. Uh, what happened in the game after takes takes? Yeah, momentum like slightly shifted in my favor. And knight e7 was a nice way to defend the pawn and then set up this this tactic, which my opponent did fall into. So some very crazy games today. Um, yeah, I'm uh, very fortunate to still have a clean streak. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you have questions, leave them below. And if you like the content, do subscribe. It does help the channel. And I'll see you guys soon.